So welcome everybody to another COVID uh, Dhamma talk session. Uh, my name is Venerable Sumangalo, and uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit about myself today, uh, why I became a monk. And so uh, my name uh, Sumangalo means one who has good blessings. And um, so why did I became a Buddhist monk? Well, there's several reasons, really, but uh, I started out, uh, well, a little bit about, about myself. I lived in um, California, uh, San Jose Bay Area, California, Silicon Valley. And I grew up there most of my life. I immigrated there from uh, southern Vietnam in 1987 with my parents and <clears throat> I moved to uh, Silicon Valley as a child, um, attended uh, primary school there, uh, middle school and high school there, and also attended a uh, university at a local uh, university around that area studying um, IT and finance. Um, so throughout my, my life, my uh, up, uh, upbringing, just growing up, you know, you have a sense that, you know, there's, there's something more to life than just what you, you're supposed to be doing, going to school, um, you know, doing this, the things that your parents expect you to do in society, and just, you know, I, you know just listening to your parents and doing the good things and making them happy. But um, in the back of you know, in your mind or your consciousness, sub subconsciously, um, there was always this underlying um, feeling, you would say, that there was this, there's more to life than, than what, what it appears to be. There's, you know, people go to work, go to school, and is that, is that all life is? just kind of going out around, chasing after degrees, money, having a family, having a wife, kids. And, you know, if you really listen to yourself, there's, there's more to it. So in life, there's, that's what we're, we're here for. We're here to investigate and understand what's, what's this life all about. Is it just all the material stuff? the rat race that we go through. And if you listen to that inner wisdom, inner silence of yourself, you spend a lot of your time by yourself, going on retreats, you know, at Jana Grove or in nature, giving yourself that, that alone time to look within. And slowly, slowly, you will see that that silence will give you meaning in life. It, will give, it, will, it, will, uh, it gives you the answers that you've been looking for all your life without any words, without any explanation, without any thinking. And this meaning of life is something that you feel inside of yourself. It's not uh, something that you read in books, uh, you, by using in your intelligence, by reading uh, smart uh, answers from people, uh, or even by asking people or wise monks or nuns and whatnot. They can only give you the superficial answer. The real answer is actually has always been there deep within your heart, deep within your mind in the peace and stillness of the heart. And that's something you can encourage others to look for themselves. But you cannot really give it to them. You cannot give something to someone else. You can guide them, encourage them, uh, sort of show them the way, sort of in a, in a more... <clears throat> 
giving them instructions and where to look, as in the, the signs, where to look, the pointing the arrow. But they themselves have to make that journey on their own, have to go through the, take the path, take the road, walk the, walk the path, and taste the, the flavor of a, a freedom of, a, of truth, of a meaning in their life. So, so that was the, the thing that um, made me want to be, try out the monastic life initially, is to find out this meaning. What is this meaning of life? Why are we here? There must be something more than just superficial outside. So that's, that's always been there um, from the beginning when I was young, <clears throat> all the way up till now. But I guess, you know, uh, as you get older, when you finish university and you have more time, uh, more free time, that you are able to investigate and look into these, um, what, what the meaning of life is and to take these opportunities of um, retreats, of uh, time for yourself. And that was... Um, Roughly around maybe 25 to 29 years old, <clears throat> when <clears throat> the calling or the meaning of life is that the calling of that uh, was uh, more prominent in my life. So after having you know a degree at university and having a job, you know having relationships, uh, having the pleasures of life, you know, going to uh, nightclubs and enjoying uh, the pleasures of the world, of good food, buffets, uh, entertainment, movies, traveling, going on holiday, vacation, doing all the, the central uh, parts of life, living, uh, you know, the happy part of life that uh, the central world has to offer, and trying that out, and taking that to, to you know a very well, to a good degree to, to understand what this, the, sens the senses can give you, central pleasures as they say. And after having experienced that to a good degree, you just kind of go, wow, yeah, it's good, yeah, you, you know, you had these experiences, but. You know, does it really give you any lasting happiness, meaning into your life? And, you know, having that free time and investigating, you feel, wow, it's pretty empty after having just these pleasures that you do on a daily basis or on a yearly basis. Wow, it's just bleeding, but it doesn't really give you any meaning in your life. Doesn't have any lasting effect. Something that you can say, "Wow!" You know, at the end of your life, you can say, "Wow, you really did something great." You know, something worthwhile with my life that can help other people and help myself. Something that you feel has a greater purpose in life. And so, about you know, twenty-nine years old investigated more of the spiritual side of uh, life, looking into different <clears throat> teachings. And um, one of the teachings I came across was uh, in Buddhism, you know, meditation in uh, the, the suttas. And I think one of the first books that I've read that really impacted me was uh, The Art of Happiness by uh, the Dalai Lama, and you know, I listened to that book through audio, audio book, and you know, that made sense to me. You know, like yeah, we are searching for happiness in this world, uh, but what is this happiness? There's this uh, happiness of the senses, of the pleasures of the five senses, and then the Dalai Lama talks about more like the happiness through compassion. Uh, helping others, helping yourself, of 
altruistic uh, happiness. So it's a, it's a different way of finding happiness or a different flavor of happiness. So in listening to um, or reading that book or listening to the audio book, you, you get a, an idea of, oh yeah, you know, this happiness is, uh, there's another way to find the happiness. So exploring further, I came across the Dhammapada, one of the Buddhist Sutta books, and it talks about more like morality, sila, uh, virtue. That's a, that's a, a kind of way of um, bringing happiness into your life, being moral. Uh, and, you know, and, and meditation. And the Dhammapada talked a lot about meditation bringing happiness. So, so I picked up a, a book on, a, an audio book on guided uh, beginning meditation. So I tried that out. And, and that was one of the first times I was like very surprised, like sitting down and just kind of relaxing the body and uh, watching the breath going in and out. And wow, this. This, this happiness is very different. It's, it's very pleasurable, and it's a different flavor of happiness. And it doesn't have um, a bad side effect compared to, like, you know, eating a lot of good food or drinking alcohol and stuff like that. It has a bad side effect. But this meditation thing, wow, this has a good side effect, and it seems to get better over time as you, the more you meditate. Uh, Month after month, year after year, it seems to build up a momentum, a snowball effect. So that was uh, my first experience in, uh, in uh, having a taste of meaning uh, into my life. And, and it made sense. The teaching made sense into how we uh, can make ourselves more happy in uh, learning the Dhamma, uh, virtue, uh, meditation, and also just wisdom. It, it made sense, uh, intuitively, that is. And also, yeah. And so, you know, I continued on the path of, a, uh, of the Dhamma, as they say, meditation, virtue, wisdom. So I... Uh, uh, found uh, Ajahn Brahm's talk on YouTube uh, regarding the Dhamma. So, uh, you know, his jokes really made it easy to digest the Dhamma. And I, uh, I found it very entertaining and useful. So I continue doing that and also at the same time practicing uh, virtue, uh, taking on more precepts, you know, giving up alcohol, giving up, uh, uh, yeah, basically taking on the five precepts. And I find that, wow, you know, get even more happy just having that virtue to support the meditation. So being a good person uh, is, is happiness. It brings happiness. And wow, I never really look at that side of things. It's something new. Wow, this path seems to be working. You're just getting more and more happy over time, gradually, little by little, with drop by drop of water. You become more happy, and you feel like, yeah, my life has meaning. There's meaning building up here. There's more to it, and it's, it feels that way. And so you, you continue. I join a meditation group, a Zen group, and you know, I sat with them every week once a week or so for a year. And wow, it, when you sit with a group, it, it encourages you to meditate longer, sit, sit longer in, in one session. And it's like, wow, you, you can do it. It's, it's possible. And with that encouragement from others, you, you continue on the path. So uh, I continued to sit with the group, with the Zen group for a year or so. And then I even sat with them in the early mornings around 5 o'clock, waking up early at 4, driving there to be there at 5. 
and then sitting like almost, well, maybe five days a week or so, early in the morning, and that, that felt good. You were up early, and you had a good meditation to start your day, and that made your life uh, a lot easier, uh, made the day flow by much uh, smoother, as they say. Less problems, less conflict, less anger, less problems. And so I, I continue with that and uh, also taking on longer retreats, like uh, 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 one week, two week retreats. And uh, I found that even more happy. Wow, you get even more time and you sat longer throughout the day. It wasn't just in the morning for an hour. But it was throughout the whole day you had to yourself, and you sat meditating the whole day, you know, 10 hours a day, with uh, rest in between for a week or two. And wow, your mind starts to really wake up. It's, wow, what's this happiness all about? It's really, really, really nice. It's something out of this world. So. You know, this happiness keeps pulling you along uh, in these long meditations. So every year, I would look forward to these meditation retreats and uh, really made use of them. And, you know, over time, the happiness keep increasing. So then I wanted to take more retreats dedicate more time in my home to meditating, spending more time in seclusion, listening to more Dhamma, uh, following the, the precepts, uh, even taking on the eight precepts, even at home, um, not just during retreats. It got to the point where I got used to taking the eight precepts even outside of retreats. So I didn't eat in the evenings, I just had like maybe uh, some sweets to keep me going. But what I found was taking on the, uh, these precepts made my, my meditation even better. It was more happy, more blissful. So that's why I took them on and continue. So keep following the teaching, following the instructions, listening to the Dhamma talks. Uh, this path seems to be getting even more happy. What is going on here? What, what is happening? I, I really didn't know exactly uh, um, at the time, but uh, basically you're just kind of following happiness, the, the, the delight, the pleasure in meditation, and, and, and your overall life is getting better. So, in that way, you continue on the path. That's what uh, pulls you along, that, that happiness, that delight. So that gave me a lot of meaning in life. It gives you a way out, a, a way to happiness that is beyond the norm of life, of the normal uh, ways of living. So as that keeps pulling at you, I just, at one point in my life I had more time, uh, no, not much responsibility, didn't have a, a girlfriend or a partner or anything like that. Uh, uh, and I was not, I was getting older, but not, not, not too old, not too young. And I, was, I thought, wow, you know, there's this monastic uh, opportunity to become a monk, to try it out, see how it feels like, you know. Not that, so I was like, yeah, why not? Give it a year, you know, just, you know, do something adventurous, do something different. Um, so I, Joined up at Bodhiyana Monastery to become an Anagarika. I signed up and came to Perth uh, to Bodhiyana Monastery to, uh, to visit uh, as a lay guest for a month in uh, 2014 in April. And uh, listening in on one of the nine day meditation retreats that Jim Brahm gave. And wow, that was very inspiring to be there for the first time. Ajahn Brahm giving really good talks on meditation and how it works and the vibe of the John Grove Retreat Center and the, the people here, were very happy people, very kind. And wow, I, I 
you know, by that time I was already on the, the list to be on Agarica, and I was like, wow, man, this is, this is going in the right direction. So uh, I stayed on the list uh, to be on Agarica, and I came back the next year about the same time in 2015, attended a nine-day retreat at Janet Grove Retreat Center, uh, and then stayed on at Bodhiyana for another month, and just really enjoying the, the way of life at the, the monastery and the retreat center, and just living with such good people, being surrounded by good people, made life meaningful and beautiful. And by the, uh, so I went back that, uh, that year, 2015, after the retreat, you know, uh, exploring other options, like visiting other monasteries to see how they were in, back in California, and just kind of like getting ready to take the next step. And then uh, in September, I got an email from um, the guest monk or so, but oh yeah, there's a spot open now as to become an energetic, come and uh, join the monastic order, sort of, to start your monastic career, to be in white, and so, um, um, yeah, I mean, at the time, I didn't have any responsibilities or anything to hold me down. So I was like, ah, why not? Let's go for it. Let's give it a year, you know, see how the experience goes. And, you know, if it didn't go good, maybe I'll become a monk. Or who knows, you know? At least, if not, and at least I have uh, I some experience of what this meditation or this monastic life can take you, how far it can, you can take it. So I went for it and became Anna Gerica for a year. And yeah, obviously there will be challenges along the way during that year. And but somehow, you know, it got even happier as Anna Gerica. Your meditation took off even more because you lived in, in a monastery with uh, such good people and good teachings. And then your meditation took off even more. And wow, this, this meditation, this path is really, really getting really good. It's really nice. So after that, I became a novice. I came back to visit my family after entering Gergership. Came back, became a novice in uh, 2016, 2017 or so. And then I stayed on at Boniana as a monk uh, from then on until now, which is about four years in total, uh, one year in white, one year as a novice, and about two years as a, a bhikkhu now. So this path is uh, just getting more happy. First, you know, you know, every year in my monastic life so far, things have improved little by little, stage by stage. Uh, just happiness, it keeps going. The meditation takes off. Um, so uh, this is what uh, I find that gives me meaning in my life. And that's, that's why I'm a, a monk, a Buddhist monk, <laughs> because of the, the meaning that it gives it to me in my life and able to help others, give service to others, like, you know, give some teachings like I'm, I'm doing today, uh, maybe sharing, more not teaching, but sharing uh, my experiences with other people. So, uh, in being in the robes, being a monk, gives me tremendous meaning in life. Uh, I can't see it if I, I can't see myself doing that as a lay person. So, this is why I am a Buddhist monk. Uh, just a little bit about my experience. Uh, just putting meaning into your life, of taking that sil uh, those silent retreats and time by yourself to give you, uh, give you the answers that you've been seeking that, that you don't need to think about. It's just something that happens in silence in, in having time to yourself. So I hope that, that this talk has been somewhat useful to you out there. And I wish you health and happiness uh, during this time of the COVID virus. And I'd like to give you a quick blessing for your 
health, and happiness. Nati me saranang anyam, Udo me saranang barang, Ete nasa chava chain a so tite, O to sabada, Nati me saranang anyam, Tamo me saranang barang, Ete nasa chava chain a so tite, O to sabada, Nati me saranang anyam, Sango me saranang barang, Ete nasa chava chain a so tite, O to sabada.